In this video, I'd like to introduce you to a collection of literary magical fairy beings of the sort that typically feature prominently in pan-European fairy tales, but here are living in the Australian bush. I will cover Australian Aboriginal Dreamtime stories in a separate video, since they are tales of a very different historical and cultural nature. At the beginning of the 20th century, the brilliant young fairy artist Ida Rantoul Althwaite began to bring fairies to life for Australian children by writing and illustrating many small booklets and articles with her sister Annie, starting in 1903 when she was only 15. Two of her most successful works were deluxe editions titled Elves and Fairies and Fairyland that featured dainty sprites and beautiful fairies in Australian settings and delicate watercolour plates. Tragically, both of her sons died in action in World War II, which she did not publish again after the war ended, saying that the war stopped the taste for fairies, in parents anyhow, and the fairies fled appalled at the bomb. The cale reproduction of the original 1929 edition of Fairyland that I'm showing here features her whimsical illustrations of fairies, witches, pixies, and other creatures of folklore frolicking in the Australian bush with native animals. He is accompanied by verses written by her sister Annie Rintoul and her husband Jenbury Outhwaite. It's a beautiful reproduction with sewn binding and cloth covers as well as 19 colour plates. I highly recommend it. Her other books are sadly out of print, but it's worth tracking down some copies if you love her illustrations as I do. Ida's magnum opus, Elves and Fairies, was one of the first fine art books to be published in Australia in 1916, and this limited edition goes for thousands of dollars today. However, you can usually find second-hand copies of very small reproductions quite cheaply, like the little world of Elves and Fairies you can see here. Mae Gibbs is one of Australia's most treasured illustrators, with her bush fantasy world creating a uniquely Australian folklore that captured the imagination of Australians for over a century. May was born in England in 1877, but emigrated to Australia at the age of four. She was a botanical illustrator from a young age, but the idea for her now iconic gumnut babies did not come to her until she was in her late 40s, with her first appearance peeping out from a headpiece for a serial by Ethel Turner that she illustrated for the Sydney Mail. May contributed to the First World War effort by creating postcards featuring her gumnut characters and Australian animals to be sent to families and in Red Cross parcels to the diggers across the world, which helped her build a foundation of supporters. Gumnut Babies was published in 1916, followed shortly after by Gum Blossom Babies, Baronia Babies, Flannel Flower and Other Bush Babies and Wattle Babies in the following year. In 1918, the Bush Babies became firmly established as part of Australian folklore with the publication of the Tales of Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie, The Adventures of Two Gumnut Brothers, which has never been out of print to this day. Most Australian children will have nostalgic memories of the adventures of the bush babies, and no one seems to forget how creepy the big bad Banksia men were. These villains of the tales are hairy, knobbly, many-eyed creatures based on aged Banksia cones. 
To mark the book's centenary, HarperCollins released a stunning slipped case 100th anniversary edition of the complete adventures of Snucklepot and Cuddle Pie in 2018. This edition includes the tales of Snucklepot and Cuddle Pie, along with its two sequels, Little Ragged Blossom and Little Abelia. May's original artwork was sourced and rescanned for this edition, resulting in illustrations that are much more bright and colourful than I had in any of my older reprints. And I also really like the new design, which features several enticing double page title spreads with close ups of the illustrations. It is a strong sewn binding and a ribbon bookmark, and also comes with a lovely print that can be framed. This edition also includes an interesting biography of the author and artist at the end of the book. On her death, May generously left the copyright of all her works jointly to two charities to benefit children with disabilities. Hume Cook was a former Victorian politician who sat down every Sunday night and made up stories to entertain his three children that included Australian fairies and elements of a local landscape. He eventually wrote them down for publication at their behest in 1925, and his Australian fairy tales book features exquisite colour plates and black and white line drawings by then young Melbourne artist Christian Yandel. Her fairy illustration work was definitely unusual at the time, with its classical art deco influences featuring a much more adult fairy population, and their spirituality reflecting her interest in theosophy. The story begins with Prince Waratah, son of King Eucalyptus of the Forest Fairies, travelling across Australia in search for a bride. Along the way, he discovers a magic well around which he builds his palace. He falls in love with Princess Wattle Blossom, but she's kidnapped en route to the wedding by the desert fairies and must be rescued. These are very English fairies who rule over their populace by divine right. The final section of the book is an extended story in verse in which the moon and stars come down to earth in human form in order to have a garden party with the fairies. The book had very high production values for the time and was marketed to the wealthier sections of the community. Having never been reprinted, this volume is now relatively scarce and not well known, although it remains a standard reference in most histories of Australian fairy. Harold Gaze was actually born in New Zealand and finally settled in California, but he lived in Australia for a time during which he wrote and illustrated the story Goblin's Glen, Adventures in Fairyland. This strange tale features original illustrations and creatures such as the Inklewink and the Inklewunk, a talking picnic camper, and a snoring billy can living in his fern-filled fairyland. The Little Grammar People by Nuri Mass is another strange volume I'd like to share with you. Nuri was born in Melbourne but spent much of her childhood in Argentina. She published Australian Wildflower Fairies in 1937, which features botanical descriptions and drawings of various Australian wildflowers, along with a short story or poem about its associated fairy. But her Little Grammar People book is a children's adventure story from 1947 that has fairy creatures standing in for various parts of speech under King Grammar is actually a pretty good way to learn grammar. The sweet and delicate illustrations are done by her mother, Celeste, who illustrated several children's fairy books with her daughter. Pixie Harris was a Welsh-born Australian author and artist who wrote and illustrated several Australian animal and fairy story collections. Her birth name was Rona Olive Harris, but Pixie was a nickname given to her when she was in her teens, and a printer's error, adding an apostrophe after her middle initial O, created her eventual nom de plume O'Harris. Oh 
Her fairy line drawings are really quite delightful, and this anthology edition of the Pixie O'Harris Fairy Book contains poems and stories from her 1940 storybook, 1950 gift book, and original fairy book from 1943, as well as the complete 1935 marine fantasy Pearl Pinky and Sea Greeny, the story of two little rock sprites. This edition has the text printed in a muted purple colour and also features illustrated end papers and a sewn binding with a ribbon bookmark. I also have a vintage copy of the Pixie O'Harris gift book to show you here, which actually has each different story printed in a different coloured ink. And I'd like to finish with a contemporary volume of Australian flower fairies, Down Under Relatives to the Better Known English Cousins by Cecily May Barker. This birthday book and its companion address book are put out by Leaves of Gold Press and they feature verses by Margaret Thornton and Australian flower fairies illustrated by Elizabeth Alger. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something new about Australian fairy art from the video. I'd love to know in the comments which artist you were familiar with beforehand and if you're inspired by any of the new one's artworks to find out more. I think my favourite of the illustrators is probably Ida Rentoul Althwaite. Her delicate fairies are just divine and the colour reproduction of her book is one of their great successes. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more and comment below if you'd like to discuss. Till next time, bye!